Hello students, welcome to Memo Neat. How are you all doing? So I hope everyone is doing good and all of you have completed your BPT 5. So I hope you people were able to solve the questions that were asked in the Brahmastra part test 5 and you have done well. So one, one thing you can do students, you can uh, comment your scores below in the comment section ki how much marks you have got. Okay, so just do one thing. Uh, Tell me the marks for chemistry, okay? Like just the marks or you can say how many questions you have got right for chemistry. Okay, out of 50 questions, how many questions you have got right for chemistry. So do comment that in the comment section, all right? And now we are going to discuss the solutions for BPT-5 in case you were having any doubts in any of the solution, okay? So here I have the question paper as well as the explanation part. So we will be starting with that students, all right? So I hope everyone is ready for that. So the first question, if I see that is question number 51 for your chemistry, it says the correct value of cell potential in volts for the reaction that occurs when two half cells are connected. So you need to tell the electrode potential, okay? The cell. So you need to tell the cell potential, E naught cell, you have to tell for this particular two reactions that are happening in the half cells. Now, do you remember what is the formula for E0 cell? So, I have told you when we were studying electrochemistry, so E0 cell was E cathode minus E anode. Okay, E0 you can write if we are talking about standard potential. So, the standard reduction potential that is happening of the reaction that is happening at the cathode minus of the reaction that is happening at anode. Now, from these two reactions in the questions, they have not given you key, uh, what kind of uh, which reaction is happening at which electrode, right? So, in that case, what you will be doing, just look at the electrode potential value. So every time you know that the electrode potential value of cathode will be in positive, okay, it will be more than the electrode potential value for the anode. So at anode, it's usually negative or you can say that the reduction potential or the electrode potential is less at the anode than that of the cathode because cathode per reduction happens. So obviously the reduction potential will be more and anode per it does not happen. So here their oxidation happens. So it would be less. Okay. So from this reaction, I can say that a reaction of dichromate ion, this one will be happening at the cathode. Okay. Just you can see here. This is the cathode half cell reaction and the at, at the anode, the reaction of ferrous ions are happening. Okay, so just put the values here that is E0 cell will be E0 cathode minus E0 anode. So 1.33 minus then it's already in minus minus 0 0.04. So it will get added. So it will come out to be 1.77 volts. Okay, so 1.77 volts would be the cell potential for this particular reaction. So that is going to be your answer. Okay. And this positive E0 cell value indicates that a spontaneous reaction is happening under the standard conditions. Okay. All right. So that was the first question. Now moving to the question number 52. Find the EMF of the cell in which the following reaction takes place at 298 Kelvin. So there is a reaction given to you. Okay. Which is happening for nickel and silver ions. So nickel plus two silver ions, here it's given 2Ag positive, gives Ni2 positive plus 2Ag. So from here, first of all, try to write the reactions separately that are happening at the cathode and the anode. Okay, in case you don't want to write it, let it be. Now you can see why I'm telling you to write the reactions because like see, here nickel is changing to nickel 2 positive. So how many electrons are lost in this case? Two electrons. Okay, and I see like, uh, silver ions, two silver ions are taking up two electrons and they are converting to silver metal. So the number of electrons that are involved in this reaction are two. Okay, the value of N is equal to two. E naught cell is given, RT upon F value is given and you need to find out the EMF of the cell means you need to find out E cell. And the concentrations are also given. Now, how will you find out the E cell? So, students, you will be applying the Nernest equation to solve this question. See, solving these questions is important because you need to understand ki what concept will be used. Now, in this question, there is no name mentioned. 
बट यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड कि इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट द ई एम एफ ऑफ द सेल फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर रिएक्शन यू नीड टू अप्लाई दी नॉनस्ट इक्वेशन हियर ओके सो द नॉनस्ट इक्वेशन इज ई सेल आई विल राइट इट हेयर अगेन फॉर यू ई सेल इज ई नॉट सेल माइनस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव नाइन वन ओके अपॉन एन इट्स बेसिकली टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री आर टी अपॉन एन एफ ना तो टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री आर टी अपॉन एफ की वैल्यू गिवन है सो वी हैव रिटर्न इट इन टू लॉग ऑफ प्रोडक्ट अपॉन रिएक्टेंट सो यूजली इट्स प्रोडक्ट कंसेंट्रेशन अपॉन रिएक्टेंट कंसेंट्रेशन तो प्रोडक्ट यहाँ पर क्या है निकल टू पॉजिटिव एंड सिल्वर सो फॉर निकल टू पॉजिटिव द कंसेंट्रेशन इज गिवन एंड सिल्वर इज इन सॉलिड तो यू नो स्टूडेंट्स की जो सॉलिड स्टेट में रहेगा उसकी जो कंसेंट्रेशन होगी वो वन होगी तो अगर हम यहाँ लिख भी लें सिल्वर एंड निकल हेयर सो इनकी कंसेंट्रेशन वन दैट विल कैंसिल आउट सो दिस विल बी द थिंग ओके सो आप इसकी वैल्यूज पुट कर दो ई नॉट सेल की वैल्यू इज गिवन ऑल द वैल्यूज आर गिवन जस्ट पुट दी वैल्यूज एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ ई सेल विल कम आउट टू बी जीरो पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स वन फाइव हाँ अ लिटल बिट कैलकुलेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड इन दिस क्वेश्चन सो दैट यू हैव टू डू ऑल द वैल्यूज आर गिवेन ओके सो दैट्स दी आंसर फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री ऑल राइट नाउ आई हैव द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच इज योर क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी थ्री so it says select the correct statements from the following okay uh, so basically this question is about the batteries okay or the cells so the first statement says that the cell potential for mercury cell remains constant during its life actually uh, that is correct students the cell potential of mercury mercury cells are those tiny cells that you use in your watches wrist watches okay uh, so that are the mercury cells so their cell potential remain constant because the net reaction for the mercury cell it is not having any ions in it okay so if there are no ions so no concentration change will be there so cell potential will remain constant okay so this is a correct statement and then it's like lanche cell in like lanche cell zinc container acts as the cathode so saying uh, your uh, like lanche cell is a primary cell okay that dry cell that you use na like lanche cell is the dry cell so you must know the names also Uh, so students you must know the names of the cells also right and so this dry cell it's actually an uh, electrochemical cell which has ammonium chloride solution as the electrolyte so there is this zinc container that actually acts as the anode means the negative electrode and uh, the carbon rod that is the graphite rod which is surrounded by powdered carbon and manganese dioxide is acting as the cathode so in this question it's written zinc container acts as the cathode which is wrong because zinc container acts as the anode in the cell and a secondary cell can be recharged after use by passing current through it it in opposite i think opposite word is missing here so yes that is also true ki secondary cell can be recharged okay secondary cells are the ones only that can be used again okay means they can be recharged after use by passing current through it in opposite direction so it means from here the answer is going to be option number 3 which is a and c only are correct as b is not correct okay now moving on to the next question which is question number 54 all right so following limiting molar conductivities are so limiting molar conductivity for calcium hydroxide calcium nitrate and ammonium nitrate are given x y and z respectively you need to find out the limiting molar conductivity for ammonium hydroxide okay so students here you will be applying the collage law so collage law states that the limiting molar conductivity of any substance is equal to the sum of limiting molar conductivity activities of the cations and the anions all right so actually it's not acetic acid here just uh, like leave it i will show you how to do so you have to find it out for ammonium nitrate using the molar conductivities that are given to you okay so it means i want ammonium ions and i want nitrate ions so ammonium ions are uh, sorry i have to find it out for ammonium hydroxide na yes ammonium nitrate is already given i need to find it out for ammonium hydroxide so means i want ammonium ions and hydroxide and so its limiting molar conductivity kya hogi limiting molar conductivity for the ammonium ions plus 
hydroxide ions according to the Collard's law. So this I will get from here. First of all, I will write the conductivity of the ammonium nitrate as it will give me one ammonium ion and then one nitrate ion. But I don't want nitrate ion here means I need to sub, uh, subtract the con conductivity of nitrate ion. So here in calcium nitrate, I have two nitrate ions. So what I will do, I will write the limiting molar conductivity of calcium nitrate and divide it by two. Because there are two nitrate ions, I just want to subtract one nitrate ions conductivity. Okay, so divide by two. Up. Now you have got calcium. Okay, you have got calcium and uh, you just need hydroxide also. So calcium, uh, what I will do here is I will add the conductivity of calcium hydroxide. But I just want one ion. Okay, one hydroxide ion. Yeah, par do hai, so I will divide it by two. Simple, right? So this is done. So for ammonium nitrate, it's Z. Okay, just look at on the left hand side. Minus for calcium nitrate, it's Y by two. And plus for calcium hydroxide x by 2. So it becomes x by 2 minus y by 2 plus z. So that is your option number 2. Okay, this is how you have to solve it. Okay, next question, question number 55. If E0 is greater than 0, then the correct option is. So E0 is the cell potential. Okay, the cell potential. So I need to relate it with the Gibbs free energy of the cell and the equilibrium constant. So do you remember the relationship here? So students, the relationship is delta G0 is equal to minus NF E0 cell. Okay, so agar E0 cell is greater than 1, of course, this whole value would be negative. Okay, if E0 cell is positive, the value of delta G0 would be negative. So, it would be less than 0. Okay, so delta G0 would, uh, will be less than 0. Now, if I relate it uh, to your equilibrium constant, so agar delta G0 will be minus RT log of uh, equilibrium constant. So if delta G naught is negative, negative negative would cancel and the log of equi uh, equilibrium constant would be positive. So it would be greater than 1. Okay, greater than 1 hoga, tabhi ye value yaha par negative aayegi. Alright, log of some positive number ho chahiye na hume. So it should be greater than 1. So log, because log 1 is 0, ab 0 se zyada hoga, then only we will uh, get uh, a positive value of log na here. So that's the thing. So it means delta G naught will be less than 0 and K equilibrium means equilibrium constant will be greater than 1. So answer is option first. Okay. Next, during electrolysis of water, the following reaction occurs at the cathode. So this question is asked from the concept of electrolytic cell and electrolysis. So you must know the reaction students. Now you can see from the questions here that it is very important to remember the reactions happening at cathode and anode. Uh, okay. For your cells. Okay. Uh, so here you know that pure water does not ionize to a great extent. So we it does not allow passage of electricity. Okay. So however, we add an acid to it which ionizes to give hydrogen ions and they combines with water to form hydronium ions. Okay. So those hydronium ions you can say or water they will uh, like gain two electrons and you will get hydrogen gas at the cathode. Okay. So the hydrogen gas is liberated at the cathode and the oxygen gas is liberated at the anode. So it's not like that you have to just remember one reaction. They can ask you the reaction that is happening at the anode also. Okay. So here you can see the answer is going to be option number two because hydrogen is liberated at the cathode. Even if you don't remember the reaction. See, in only one option, hydrogen is at the product. So you must at least know this thing ki in the electrolysis of water hydrogen is liberated at the cathode and oxygen is liberated at the anode just by this information also you can solve this particular question okay so this is how you have to solve okay um, so sometimes you just have to be smart enough to see the answer if even if you don't remember the reaction just try to recall the things that you know about that particular reaction okay all right. So next is question number 57. Which of the following statement is true about the fuel cells? Okay. So you know that fuel cells may what happens? Yes, they convert uh, chemical energy directly into electrical energy. Okay. By burning of fuel directly, jo chemical energy hai, 
it gets converted to electrical energy without combustion so that's true they utilize continuous flow of reactants and products yes so what happens in flu uh, fuel cell students that continuously reactants have to be fed into the fuel cell and the products are removed continuously it happens okay so that's the thing it's also true third is they have very high efficiency as compared to traditional combustion engines ha huh? so yes this traditional combustion engines they are not very efficient they have efficiency of around 40% okay whereas in the case of fuel cells they have around the efficiency of 60 to 70% so this is also true it means the answer is option 4 all the statements are true okay all right let's move on to the next question then uh, which is question number 58 During the discharge of a lead acid battery, the following reactions occurs at the anode. Now again, we are talking about the lead acid battery, which is your secondary battery or secondary cell that you have now. So, what is the reaction that happens in this uh, particular battery during the discharge? Okay, means when it is working. जब discharge हो रहा है तो what is the uh, reaction happening? So, this reaction actually happens on the recharge okay when you have to recharge it na so these reactions happen but in discharge what happens is there are two reactions that takes place at cathode and anode so i will write it for you okay so the reaction uh, that takes place at the cathode is lead oxide okay plus sulfate ions that you are having of course you are having h2so4 na so there will be sulfate ions and hydrogen ions Plus two electrons, so that's the reaction. I will write the product here. It gives lead sulfate aqueous. Sorry, it's not aqueous. It's solid plus two H two O. That happens at the cathode, and the reaction that takes place at the anode is the lead ions. Uh, okay, plus the sulfate ions. They will give you lead sulfate plus. two electrons so this is the reaction okay so overall reaction kya hoga lead plus lead oxide plus h2so4 what it is giving you it is giving you lead sulfate and h2o so this reaction happens whenever the discharge is happening and the reaction given here this one is reversed when you have to uh, charge the battery na so this is reversed so lead sulfate and water comes on the reactant side okay so this is the reaction i have given you now from here you can see the reaction that takes place at anode is lead plus sulfate ions gives lead sulfate and two electrons so the answer is going to be option 1 okay all right uh, 59 question students which of the following statement is correct so it's about e cell and delta uh, g means your uh, a uh, cell potential and the gibbs free energy about intensive and uh, extensive properties so students the property so it's related to thermodynamic it's a thermodynamical concept so the physical property of a system that do not depend on the amount and size of the system are called intensive properties may uh, means they are in independent of the size and the amount of system like temperature pressure okay all of that but uh, so e cell e cell or e not cell or the emf of cell it is actually independent of the amount of substance it does not depend on the number of particles or anything but the gibbs free energy so gibbs free energy is minus nf e cell right so n kya hai yahan par the number of electrons that are participating so basically students this gibbs free energy uh, change it depends upon the amount of substance present in the system ki how much amount of substance is present in the system so it is actually an extensive property okay so it means e cell is an intensive property and delta g is extensive property so the answer is option number 3 okay so in question number 60 there are some statements given to you and uh, you need to tell the incorrect statement okay so first is q is equal to it so you know yes charge is equal to uh, current into time because current is charge flowing through the system per unit time to yahan se charge will be i into t this is correct okay all right uh, so charge required for oxidation or reduction depends on stoichiometry of electrode reaction yes this is in accordance with the faraday's law ki whatever charge is required for the oxidation and reduction that amount of charge will depend on the uh, 
uh, means the charge will depend on the uh, weight of the substance or like that so it means yes it will depend on the stoichiometry of the reaction it means uh, if i am having this uh, copper ions okay so here there are two electrons involved now so this uh, faraday one faraday is actually 96500 coulomb per mole so it means here you will be requiring two faradays of electricity or two faradays of charge so yes that depends on the stoichiometry this is correct charge on one electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb this is also true and one mole of electron so agar if i talk about charge of one mole of electron so i have to multiply this charge na 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 with the Avogadro's number so in this case the value that comes out to be it's uh, nine around nine six uh, four five eight okay so it's come uh, actual may lick the nine six five double zero coulomb per mole that is one Faraday so one Faraday of charge is present on one mole of electron okay see so this is wrong unit of current is uh, coulomb this is also wrong because the units of charge are coulomb current ka unit hota hai ampere and one faraday is 96500 coulomb per mole this is true so it means fourth and fifth are incorrect so answer is going to be option three okay fourth and fifth now let us see question number 61 so here we have to match the given terms in column 1 with the terms in column uh, 2 students so basically we have been given uh, lambda m so lambda m is the molar conductivity e naught cell so e naught cell is the cell potential after that we have kappa and delta g cell means the gives free energy so students we know that lambda m represents the molar conductivity and it is the conductivity of the solution divided by the concentration so you know that uh, here uh, this lambda m uh, it uh, depends on the volume okay so molar conductivity it is directly proportional to the volume so it means with the dilution it will increase so it will increase with the increase in volume of the solution okay so after that we have e naught cell all right so e naught cell is an intensive property because it does not depend on the mass of the system okay so for b it's one then kappa is the conductivity or the specific conductance of the cell so it depends on the number of ions per unit volume okay so for c it's 2 and delta g is minus nf e naught so here we are having the delta g naught which is actually dependent on n which is moles of electrons transferred in the reaction so it's an extensive property okay so d3 all right so in this case the answer is going to be four option number four okay question number 62 may again there is a match the following type question all right students so in this case you can see here again we are uh, given lambda m e naught cell kappa and delta g the quantities given are same but the uh, units are given okay so if i talk about this uh, lambda m which is again your molar conductivity so it is con uh, conductivity divided by the concentration so conductivity is simon per centimeter and concentration is mole per liter okay so in this case it will be simon uh, centimeter cube okay basically so instead of liters we can write a uh, centimeter cube also okay that's one of the unit of your volume so from here it will become simon centimeter square per mole all right so for a it's option number three e naught cell uh, it's cell potential so its unit is volt all right uh, conductivity is simon per centimeter and delta g naught gives free energy is in joules all right so yes the answer of this uh, question would be option number one okay a3 b4 c1 and d2 all right next question number 63 so in question number 63 students we have which of the following statements regarding given cell representation is correct so the cell representation is given here uh, that is cadmium to cadmium 2 positive okay and ag plus to ag solid okay so this double line represents your solid bridge 
Okay, so the first statement is cadmium electrode acts as the anode, whereas Ag electrode acts as the cathode. All right. So in this case, the oxidation half cell. So here, this is oxidation happening. Okay, and you know that oxidation happens at the anode. So yes, the cadmium electrode would be the anode, and here reduction is happening, reduction of silver ions. So it will act at the cathode. Okay, so yes, silver will be acting as the cathode so option first is correct only second one will be wrong because cadmium is not the cathode here all right and e cell will be e ag ag plus minus e uh, of cadmium to cadmium so yes you know that e cell is always equal to e cathode minus e anode so yes uh, if you subtract the reduction potential of silver and cadmium, so yes, you will get the E cell. So yes, the third one is also correct. So one and three are correct. So answer is option number four. Okay, students. Now question number 64 it is. So it says specific conductivity of 0.1 normal KCl is 0 0.0129 per ohm per centimeter. The resistance of the solution is 100 ohm. The cell constant would be. So you need to determine the cell constant okay just go g star say represent them all right so actually cell constant is given by the conductivity kappa divided by the uh, conductance or conductance you know that it is actually equal to one upon resistance okay so it means if you want to find out the if you want to find out the cell constant so it will be conductivity into the resistance okay so here conductivity is given resistance is given you will multiply it will come out to be 1.29 so answer is option number two okay all right so that's the thing next question number 65 assertion says copper sulfate solution is stored in zinc pot reason zinc is more reactive than copper so it displaces copper from copper sulfate okay so if I talk about the reactions taking place in this uh, question, uh, so all right, here copper uh, gains two electrons. So the cell potential is 0 0.34 volts means the reduction potential and for zinc uh, reaction, the reduction potential is 0 0.76 volts. All right. So if I find out the value of uh, E cell here, okay, so E cell is going to be E cathode minus E anode. All right, so the students, it should be minus 0 0.76. Okay, so when you add it up, uh, so E cathode minus E anode, so it will come out to be 1.1 volt and the reaction is, uh, so the E cell is positive. So delta G will be negative and the reaction will be feasible. Okay, so copper, uh, sulfate solution cannot be stored in a zinc pot because yes zinc is more reactive than copper and it will displace copper from copper sulfate so assertion is incorrect and reason is correct answer is option number four okay question number 66 electrolysis of sodium chloride gives chlorine at the anode instead of oxygen reason formation of oxygen at anode requires over voltage so yes basically students what happens in electrolysis of NaCl chlorine gas you will get at the anode okay so these are the two half cell uh, reactions that take place all right now in this case you can see two reactions can take place either you can get oxygen gas or you can get chlorine gas and the lower value of electrode potential will be preferred at the anode now because uh, there will be less reduction potential so it will be preferred at the anode but in this case, so oxygen would be released, but actually due to over voltage, yes. So uh, because of the concept of over voltage, instead of this reaction, the reaction of chloride ions is feasible. So it means both assertion and reason are true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion. The answer will be option A. All right. So that's the thing. Now question number uh, 67. In equation delta G is equal to minus NF E cell, the value of delta G depends on N, okay. Reason, E cell is an intensive property, delta G extensive property and we have to choose the right answer, okay. So for question number uh, 67, so you know students that delta G is minus NF E naught E cell and yes of course it will depend on the value of N, 
means the number of electrons number of moles of electrons that are uh, required in the particular reaction okay so yes that depends on n but they are saying e cell is an intensive property delta g is extensive this is also correct but this is not the correct explanation of assertion okay so answer is going to be option number 4 all right okay uh, so that's the answer now next question is question number 68 actually both the statements are true and here they are saying ki reason is the correct explanation of assertion yes because e is an intensive property delta g jo hai, it's an extensive property so that's why its value actually depends on n now question number 68 again statement based question uh, conductivity of an electrolytic solution increases on uh, dilution okay and uh, molar conductivity increases on dilution now what happens is students that the conductivity of an electrolytic uh, solution see you know what happens is when you are diluting a particular solution so the number of ions have per unit volume they are going to decrease okay number of ions per unit volume because they are carrying the current no so if the number of ions are decreasing conductivity will decrease okay so conductivity will decrease and if I talk about molar conductivity, so molar conductivity depends on the volume, it is directly proportional to the volume. So because whenever you are diluting the solution, dissociation will be more, number of ions are going to increase, means the number of moles present in a particular volume is going to increase. So molar conductivity increases with uh, dilution, but conductivity decreases with dilution, okay? So, first statement is wrong and second statement is true. Answer is option number 4. Alright. Question number 69. So, E0 cell for the silver reaction and for zinc it's given. When these electrodes are connected, then the value of E cell would be. Again, now you know that reduction potential is the tendency to gain electrons and get reduced. Okay. So, means larger uh, con reduction potential means more tendency to get reduced. Alright. So, it means that this cell will be acting as the cathode, the silver one which is having more reduction potential and the zinc one will be acting as the anode. Okay. So, in this case, uh, you will just write the value. So, E0 cell would be equal to E cathode minus E anode. So, E cathode will be 0 0.8 minus minus 0 0.76. So, yeah, it will come out to be 1.56 volts. So, the answer is option A. Okay, this is how it's done. Question number 70, which of the following statement is true about concentration of electrolyte and cell potential in galvanic cell? So, increasing electrolytic concentration, it decreases the cell potential. Okay. Next, decreasing electrolytic con uh, concentration increases cell potential. Now, cell potential remain constant regardless of the electrolytic concentration. The effect of concentration on cell potential depends on a specific reaction. So, these are the four statements that we have. So, students, the answer for this particular question can be given using the Nernest equation. So, according to the Nernest equation, you know E cell will be equal to E0 cell minus RT upon NF log of concentration of product upon reactant. No? So, as the concentration of the reactant will increase, what will happen? The E cell value will also increase. So, okay students, the uh, concentration uh, of the reactants, if means if we are increasing the concentration of the electrolyte, it will increase the cell potential. So, answer is going to be option 2. Okay, so write 2 in this particular case. Now, uh, 71 question number, which of the following is an example of secondary battery? Dry cell is an example of a primary cell. Okay, lead acid uh, battery is an example of secondary cell and lithium ion battery is also the example of secondary cell because they can be recharged again okay that's a secondary cell now these are the rechargeable batteries so the answer is option number four 
ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन स्टैंडर्ड इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल ऑफ द सेल एच एच टू टू एच एंड सिल्वर आयंस टू सिल्वर इज सो स्टूडेंट्स यू नो दैट द स्टैंडर्ड इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल फॉर द हाइड्रोजन इलेक्ट्रोड इट इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड फॉर सिल्वर आयंस इज पॉइंट एट वोल्ट सो ई नॉट सेल विल बी कैथोड ई कैथोड माइनस ई एन ओड सो ई कैथोड इज जीरो पॉइंट एट जीरो माइनस जीरो सो इट विल बी सेम जीरो पॉइंट एट वोल्ट बिकॉज इफ वी आर हैविंग दिस हाइड्रोजन इलेक्ट्रोड इट विल बी ऑलवेज अटैच एट्स दी एनोड ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी थ्री विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोलिटिक सेल्स इज नॉट ट्रू सो दे यूज इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी टू ड्राइव स्पॉन्टेनियस रिएक्शन दिस इज एक्चुअली ट्रू ओके बिकॉज इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी इज कन्वर्टेड टू केमिकल एनर्जी इन इलेक्ट्रोलिटिक सेल कैथोड इज द साइट ऑफ रिडक्शन दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू ओके रिडक्शन टेक्स प्लेस एट कैथोड ऑक्सीडेशन टेक्स प्लेस एट एनोड नाउ ओवरऑल सेल रिएक्शन इज ऑलवेज एक्सोथर्मिक नाउ स्टूडेंट्स इन एक्सोथर्मिक रिएक्शन मोर एनर्जी इज रिलीज वेन द बॉन्ड्स आर फॉर्म इन द प्रोडक्ट्स देन इट इज यूज टू ब्रेक इन द रिएक्टेंट्स ओके एंड द वंस दैट आर एब्जॉर्बिंग एनर्जी आर कॉल्ड एंडोथर्मिक सो इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी की ऑलवेज इट विल बी एक्सोथर्मिक इट कैन बी एंडोथर्मिक एज वेल ओके एंड एक्सटर्नल पावर सोर्स इज रिक्वायर्ड दिस इज ट्रू बिकॉज वी रिक्वायर इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी फॉर ड्राइविंग आउट द नॉन स्पॉन्टेनियस रिएक्शन सो द स्टेटमेंट विच इज नॉट ट्रू इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री ओके नेक्स्ट अब क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी फोर इलेक्ट्रो कैटलिस इज द एक्सलरेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल रिएक्शन बाय अ कैटलिस्ट which of the following statement is not true about electro catalysis okay so the answer is option number 4 actually if i talk about the first one so electrolysis electro catalyst can lower the activation energy of the reaction so that is actually true they affect the uh, low, like they lower the activation energy but they cannot affect the reaction thermodynamics okay then they can increase the current density at a specific potential so yes what happens is they enhance the rate of chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy which in turn increases the current density okay they are not consumed in the reaction so yes they facilitate the reaction without undergoing any permanent chemical changes they will temporarily interact with the reactants and lower the activation energy but they will not be consumed they are highly efficient so actually not all the electrocatalysis processes are highly efficient so this statement is not true all right next up conductivity of a solution is directly proportional to so conductivity of the solution students it's directly proportional to the number of ions present in the solution because more number of ions means more current would flow and yes higher will be the conductivity of the solution because there would be more charge carriers right electrolyte solution or so, sorry the electrolyte used is leclanche cell is so students in leclanche cell which is your dry cell which is a primary battery uh, moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride is used in the leclanche cell the paste of koh and zinc oxide is used in alkaline batteries this also you should know 38% of H2SO4 is used in your lead acid battery all right and moist sodium hydroxide is used in alkaline and nickel cadmium batteries so moist base of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride is used in the dry cell okay next up question number 77 half cell reaction with their appropriate standard reduction potential are okay so there are some half cell reactions given to you and the reduction potential values are given which of the following reaction would take place okay now you need to tell ki which of the reaction will take place now you know that the species which have a negative reduction potential they can reduce hydrogen ions to give hydrogen okay and they will act as the anode because the ones that have negative uh, reduction potential they will act as anode and they will oxidize all right so in this case the reduction potential is given like this okay so i told you the one that are having negative reduction potential can reduce hydrogen ions to hydrogen so second reaction will be true okay third one will not be true because silver have the silver ions have positive reduction potential okay and if i look at this uh, reaction in this case so you can calculate the e cell for the 
reaction okay so when you calculate the e cell for the reaction so again it will be e cathode minus e anode so the one that is having more reduction potential will be happening at the cathode so 0 0.80 minus minus 0 0.13 so of course it will come out to be positive 0 0.93 volts so obviously first reaction will also take place so both one and two are correct the answer is option four okay now question number 78 calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction e naught sal value is given okay so first of all students you need to calculate the e cell in this case okay and so we have applied the earnest equation here e cell is equal to e naught cell minus 2.303 rt upon nf log of react uh, product concentration upon reactance concentration so you know at equilibrium okay the value of e cell would be zero e naught cell would be okay at equilibrium the e cell would be zero and the concentration would be equal to the equilibrium constant and e naught cell value is given okay so just put the values here from this uh, equation and when you put the values then you will take nt log so it will come out to be 2 into 10 to the power 37 okay so that will be your equilibrium constant so question number 79 students 6 ampere current with 75 percent efficiency is passed through a cell for 6 hours the amount of metal deposited would be so you need in this case you need to tell the amount of metal deposited okay so you know that according to the faraday's first law the amount of electrolyte uh, deposit or like the some amount of substance deposited is directly proportional to the amount of current passed through it okay so efficiency is given 75 percent current is 5 ampere uh, sorry 6 amperes in this case okay and time is 6 hours again okay so put the values here so you know work done would be equal to z into current into t now efficiency is also there so i will just write 75 upon 100 so z is 4 in this case okay it's i think given it's not correctly printed in this case so but z is 4 uh, so uh, 4 into 10 okay i think it is not correctly printed here students okay there is some printing error but obviously the value of z you know it's specific for any cell now so it will be given to you so just write the value of z and i and t and multiply it with the efficiency so it will come out to be 38.8 grams so you can write this answer okay next is question number uh, 80 all right at 298 kelvin the standard electrode potential of uh, four cells are given to you you have to tell which reaction cannot occur okay so according to the standard rea uh, reduction potentials uh, the uh, order of reactivity would be zinc then iron then copper then silver okay because the reduction potential is give increasing in the same order so if it is increasing in this order so it will be your uh, uh, reactivity order so you know more reactive metals can displace less reactive one from their solution so copper sulfate plus silver gives copper plus uh, agso4 but silver actually cannot displace copper because it is less reactive than copper so the this reaction will not happen the third one okay question number 81 standard electrode potential for the cell with the reaction is given you have to calculate the gibbs free energy change so you know the gibbs free energy change delta g naught is minus nf e naught cell so the value of n will be 2 in this particular reaction the value of f is given 96487 all right and e naught cell is also given 1.1 so just put the values all the values you have to put in this reaction and you will get minus 212.3 kilojoule per mole okay 0.27 you can write so it's option number three okay students question number 82 so there are some half cell reactions uh, given to you will the permanganate ion liberate oxygen from water in the presence of acid that we have to tell 
okay so here uh, you know the reactions takes place in the electrochemical cell where the electrons are lost at the anode and the, they are gained at the cathode so e cell is given by e cat e not cathode minus e not anode okay so if we find uh, like write the value of e cell here so you will get 0.287 all right so it means the reaction will occur in this case because the value is positive and if e cell is positive delta g not will be negative and the reaction will be spontaneous okay 83 molar conductance of electrolyte increases with dilution according to this this is the biochemical onsager equation which of the following statements are true okay so yes students actually for strong electrolyte the molar conductivity increases slowly with the dilution all right value of a depends on the type of electrolyte all electrolytes have the same value for a like all electrolytes if or, or like they are of a particular type it will have a small uh, same value for a so in this case the answer is option 4 b and d are correct okay because this equation does not apply to both strong and weak electrolytes value of a depends on the nature of solvent correct value of a is same for both barium chloride and magnesium hydroxide because the number of ions will be like here you see barium 2 positive and 2 cl minus and here mg 2 positive and 2 oh minus so the number is 2 and minus 1 so yes the value of a will be same for both of these okay um now question number 84 specific conductance of 0.1 normal kcl is this resistance of a cell is given the cell constant is again students in this case cell constant you know it will be equal to specific resist uh, conductance into resistance kappa into r because it's kappa upon g na conductance is inversely proportional to resistance so in that case it is observed resistance into conductance so it will come out to be 0 0.66 per centimeter when we multiply it okay question number 85 so we have to match the cell notations with the e naught values okay so e naught uh, cells are given so you just have to apply the formula e cell e cathode minus e anode for all the reactions so for first reaction it's 1.1 for second one it's 0 0.59 third one 0 0.46 and fourth is 1.56 so answer is option a so you just have to apply the formula and find the values okay so these were the questions from our section a now we will be moving to the section b that is question number 86 so students the question number 86 is that the atomic weight of aluminium is 27 when a current of 5 faradays passed through a solution of aluminium ions the weight of aluminium deposited is so so you know we will be applying the faraday's law here and we know that one faraday is the charge of one mole of elementary charges means one mole of electron and one faraday is equal to 9648 uh, of 96485 coulomb okay so now you know the amount of uh, aluminium deposited will be dependent on the equivalent weight of aluminium so here uh, if aluminium ions are getting reduced it will require three electrons okay so equivalent weight of aluminium will be atomic weight of aluminium which is 27 divided by 3 it will be equal to 9 so the weight of aluminium deposited will be uh, 9 which is the equivalent weight into number of faradays which is 5 so it is 45 grams the answer will be option number 3 okay now question number 87 during the electrolysis of NaCl now question number 87 is during electrolysis of NaCl part of reaction is Na plus uh, it is gaining electron this is termed as so you know students that the gain of electrons is known as reduction so here sodium ions are gaining electrons so this is a very simple question the answer is option number two reduction okay now question number 88 the value of resistivity of 0.1 molar solution of electrolyte is 77 ohm concentration is given resistivity is given so we need to find out the molar conductivity of the solution 
so students resistivity is 77 ohm centimeter so you know conductivity kappa is the inverse of resistivity so conductivity will be 1 upon 77 and molar conductivity is the conductivity upon concentration so kappa into 1000 upon m all right so m is already given which is 0.1 so you will find it out 1 upon 77 into 1000 upon 0.1 so it will come out to be 130 simon centimeter square per mole so answer is option number 2 okay Question number 89 students given below are two statements during electrolysis of H2SO4 solution at higher concentration uh, sulfate ions are converted to S2O8 ions at anode and during electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid water is oxidized at anode so you have to choose the right answer so in this case the answer is both the statements are true because during the electrolysis of concentrated H2SO4 sulfate ions are oxidized to form peroxo disulfate ions all right like this and at the cathode hydrogen ions are reduced to produce a hydrogen gas and water is oxidized at anode to give the oxygen gas so it means both uh, statements are true question number 90 students the e naught values of the three reactions are given a naught to a b naught b plus to b and c plus to c okay the order of the reducing power is so students you know that higher the reduction potential okay higher the value of e naught higher will be the reducing uh, power okay c means higher will be sorry higher will be the ability to get reduced okay so see if the reduction potential is high means higher will be the ability to get reduced means that uh, substance will be acting as the oxidizing agent means stronger oxidizing agent it will be means higher e naught value indicates lower reducing uh, potential okay so it means it will be inversely related so here you can see that uh, the highest reduction potential is for b okay so b will be having the lowest reducing power okay then followed by c and then followed by a or you can say a c b will be the correct order because so here the answer is going to be option number okay question number 92 students aluminium displaces hydrogen from dilute hcl whereas silver does not the mf of the cell prepared by combining aluminium and silver is 2.46 volt the reduction potential of silver electrode is 0 0.80 so you have to find out the reduction potential for the aluminium electrode okay so in this uh, particular question you see the cell is uh, can be shown like this so you know the e cell will be e naught cathode minus e naught anode all right so in that case the e cell is already given okay now which one you will uh, see here you have to see ki which one will be acting as the cathode and which one will be acting as the anode um so students here silver ions they are saying uh, that it cannot displace hydrogen from dilute HCl so in that case means it is less reactive okay and aluminium will be more reactive so here if you find the uh, reduction potential so obviously silver ions will be acting as the anode here and aluminium will be acting as the cathode okay I think it's written wrongly in this case so yeah but like this it will be okay so E cell is already given and for aluminium you have to find out okay so you can find it out by subtracting the values okay so it will come out to be minus 1.66 electron sorry volts okay now what is the anode and cathode in the cell given in this figure so here you have been given a Leclanche cell okay Leclanche cell or the dry cell okay so students you know that uh, in the Leclanche cell the zinc metal is acting as the anode the zinc container is acting as the anode okay and cathode is this carbon rod that is in the center all right so yeah so as you can see the answer is going to be one because the zinc cup is the anode and the carbon rod is the 
कैथोड ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर 94 इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल फॉर मैग्नीशियम इलेक्ट्रोड वेरीज अकॉर्डिंग टू द इक्वेशन सो हियर द इलेक्ट्रोड पोटेंशियल वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द करेक्ट ग्राफ सो दिस विल बी द करेक्ट ग्राफ इन दिस केस ऑल राइट सो इंटरसेप्ट इज देयर व्हिच इज ई नॉट ऑल राइट एंड स्लोप इज 0.059 अपॉन 2 सो द आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी ऑप्शन नंबर 2 ऑल राइट क्वेश्चन नंबर 95 द मोलर कंडक्टेंस ऑफ सोडियम क्लोराइड HCl एंड सोडियम एसिटेट आर गिवन सो मोलर कंडक्टेंस ऑफ एसिटिक एसिड यू हैव टू फाइंड इट आउट सो अगेन यू विल बी अप्लाइंग द कोलार्स लॉ ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट माइग्रेशन ऑफ आयंस व्हिच सेस कि जो मोलर कंडक्टिविटी है इट कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड एज द सम ऑफ इंडिविजुअल कंट्रीब्यूशंस ऑफ कैटायंस एंड एनायंस ओके सो फॉर एसिटिक एसिड इट वुड बी इक्वल टू द मोलर कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ सोडियम एसिटेट यहां से हमें uh acetate ions mil jayenge okay then plus hcl because i will get hydrogen ions here now to subtract sodium and chloride i will subtract the so, uh, molar conductivity of sodium chloride here so just put the values you will get 390.71 simon centimeter square per mole okay next question students 96 on electrolyzing a solution of dilute sulfuric acid between platinum electrodes the gas evolved at anode is so you know h2so4 when it is electrolyzed there will be two types of anions hydroxide ions and sulfate ions okay but the oxidation potential of the hydroxide ion is higher so it will get oxidized so you will be getting oxygen gas at the anode and hydrogen gas at the cathode so answer is option number 3 okay Next is question number 97. On electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid using a platinum electrode, the product obtained at anode is, I think both the questions are same here in this case. Yeah, both are using platinum electrode, no? So, yeah, the answer is going to be option number A only, which is oxygen gas, okay? Um, next up, question number 98. Corrosion can be prevented using various methods. Which of this is a sacrificial method? Sacrificial uh, anode. Uh, sacrificial anode means the metals or alloys that attach to the hull that have more anodic, means less noble potential than steel when immersed in seawater, means they will sacrifice themselves okay and they will prevent the metal uh, from the corrosion all right so the answer is going to be applying a cathodic protection system okay so cathodic protection current will be there but they will be consumed in doing so that's why they require replacement for the protection to be maintained okay next is question number 99 students which of the following factors can affect the rate of an electrochemical reaction? Okay, uh, so the rate of electrochemical reaction is determined by the concentration of reactant. Yes, it is determined by the surface area. Okay, so larger surface area, it will provide more site for the reaction to occur, which will potentially increase the rate. And yes, temperature also affects the kinetic energy of the molecules. So, it will increase the number of successful collisions. Therefore, it will increase the reaction rate. So, the answer is all of the above. Next, the conductivity of an electrolyte solution depends on the concentration of ions present. So, which one will have highest conductivity? Okay. So, students, you have distilled water. It is not having any ions present in it. So, it will not be having highest conductivity. Then, point 0.1 molar NaCl saturated NaCl or concentrated sulfuric acid so again the one having highest concentration of ions will be having your highest conductivity so 0.1 molar NaCl has moderate concentration saturated NaCl has maximum NaCl so it will have higher concentration than 0.1 okay concentrated sulfuric acid you know it's a strong acid that dissociates completely into the solution and that too it is concentrated in this case so you will get higher number of ions and the answer is going to be option number four it will have the highest conductivity so students these were the solutions for your ppt5 for chemistry in case you have not understood any question so you can comment below and ask us all right we will try to solve your uh, doubts so all the best for your next exam so until then take care bye bye